Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 1000 Series PLC Click Ethernet IP Remote I.O. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. The link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So we'll now utilize Ethernet IP to, to connect a Click PLC to Remote I.O. on a Productivity system. Now the Productivity series of controllers can use explicit and implicit messaging techniques of Ethernet IP, which is the protocol. And this will optimize data exchanges across the network. Now explicit messaging means that the data messages that are transmitted will contain everything needed in order to respond or decode the message. It is normal, it's normally a client-server relationship with instructions explicitly spelled out in the data messages. Now this communication happens at times that the client requests the information. So typically what you'll see is for explicit would be as part of your program, you would ask for information at certain times. Now implicit messaging, which, which we'll do today, means that data messages are streamlined and the device is configured ahead of time to know what to do with the data. And this is used for time critical messages and it functions like a typical scanner adapter relationship. So remote IO like we're gonna be doing. Implicit messaging is real time and it's the ability to copy data with minimal additional information because both ends already know what exactly what each byte and bit will do. Now a click PLC can be set up as a remote distributed inputs and outputs for our Productivity 1000 controller and implicit Ethernet IP will be set up. Now the click will be the Ethernet IP adapter and the Productivity will be the Ethernet IP scanner. So let's get started. And up on my screen, you'll see that we have open the click PLC programming software. So the first thing we'll do is go to the setup and we can look at the system configuration for our current network. There we go. And you can see here that we have our power supply, we have our CPU and we have an analog card. So what I'm interested in here is the inputs and outputs that we are going to be reading and writing or allowing our productivity to actually use as remote IO. So on, in this case here, we have X1 to X8, and we have Y1 to Y6. That will be used for our uh, input and output IO that are on board here, the CPU. Then we have our analog card. Our analog card will use inputs DF1 to DF4, and output DF5 to DF6. Under the config, you will see here that this is where we get the values from. We can actually program that in to the card and it will do scaling from zero to hundred uh, percent. Cancel okay, so that. So that has how we get our um, inputs and outputs and where they are. So now next we go again under setup system configuration. Or sorry, uh, we'll close that down and we'll go setup and then we will go our COM port settings. And under our COM port settings, we will go to port number one, which is our ethernet port, and we'll hit setup. And under setup, you'll see that we have manually set or used a static IP address for our uh, information or for our address for this click PLC. We need to use a static in order for that the scanner can actually see our adapter that we're programming here. So 192, 168, 1, 130 is our IP address with a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 0. Now default gateway really doesn't matter in our case because it's on the network, but we can have that anyway. And then we have our timeouts. So we'll just hit cancel there. So that is our port setup. We'll cancel out that one. And then next under setup, we can see our Ethernet IP setup. This is what uh, this is where we're going to actually program in what we want to be exposed onto the network so our productivity can actually see this information. So the first thing we're going to do is it defaults to number two or one connection, but we're going to put two connections in. And you'll see why in a minute. You'll see our connection one, we have two tabs, connection one, connection two. Our input scanner is here, and then we have an output there. So on our input for connection one, we have a block. We're going to do XD0 to XD0. 
This gives me 32 bits that represent my inputs that I have on my Click PLC. So you see the start is one uh, byte and the end is uh, byte four. So we have a total of four bytes for our input. And you'll also notice that our instant or our connection point, I should say, is 101. Now this is important in order to connect using our implicit uh, communication. So 101 is what we use for our inputs. Then if we go to our output part of our scanner, we're gonna do a block of YD0 to YD0. Again, 32 bits, right? Even though we're only controlling the first ones, that's how it maps into the IO of our click. And again, we have four bytes of information here and our connection point is 102 in this case here. Notice that we've hit the clear. So if we lose communication or we're not uh, um, communicating anymore using Ethernet IP, it will actually clear or zero those inputs out and outputs out. Now on connection number two, our input, again, our connection point automatically defaults to 103. We have our analog input, which is DF1 to DF4. So we have uh, 16 bytes of information here. And then on our output side to our scanner, then what we have is DF5 and DF6, which is the output analog values. And again, we go from one to eight. So we have eight bytes of information here. Again, the clear is, uh, is set. Now we've left everything else as the default values. So we'll just hit okay for that. And we can actually view our address mapping. So here's our address mapping for our Click Ethernet IP adapter. So we have our inputs, outputs, input two, output two. So you see here our input one and in output one are hex values, which represent our actual digital input and digital output. And then we have our analog in, DF1 to four, and then we have an analog out, DF5, DF6. So we can just close that down. So we'll hit okay for that. And what we'll do is we've already had this into our controller, but we can actually then write this information into our connected CPU. And we'll just hit okay. We'll do a, a runtime. And what you'll see is we've also put just an end statement up here. So now this program is in our controller. Next thing what we'll do is take a look at our setup and we'll go to our our scan time and this displays our scan time you'll see that our current scan time is is around one milliseconds less than milliseconds our min is zero our maximum scan time that it actually ever reached was six milliseconds so what that's going to do is we're going to set our update time for this remote IO as about 10 milliseconds this will allow us enough time in order to do all the uh, communications that we need okay so currently right now, we have our um, adapter now set to run. So let's just uh, maybe move this over a little bit. Okay. And let's call up our productivity software. And under our productivity software, we'll go again to set up hardware configuration. And we'll look at our CPU first. And under the CPU, we'll look at our Ethernet here, and we'll just double click the port or the, on the uh, CPU itself, and you will see what comes up. We'll hit the Ethernet port tab, and under that, you can see that again, we've set up a static IP address for this uh, system. And it's important to use static IP addresses when you have a fixed network here, like we do. So our address is 192.168.140. And our subnet mask 255, 255, 255, which matches exactly what the click had. So we'll just hit OK. And coming back here, you'll also now see that once we have that, we can set up our Ethernet IP. And we can double click. This is our Ethernet IP now tab. And normally this would be blank. We've had it set up here. We call this a click scanner. You can either double click on the generic Ethernet or generic client or we can click and drag it over to our screen here. So if we call this up, these are our properties that we have for our ethernet client. So we've used the structure, it says called client or click scanner. 
we call a device name as Click Scanner. We put the IP, IP address in for the Click PLC, which is 192.168.1.130. We left the default, default IP or TCP port number. Then what we did was we hit plus and we added our IO scanner, which then added message number one IO. Now our IO scanner means that's going to be implicit messaging that we're going to be doing. So this is our enable. And then we look at our three tabs for our message number one. We have our inputs, we have our outputs, and we have our config. So first of all, our inputs, what we're going to do is our RPI okay, and our IPI, uh, which represents our, our time in which we are going to update which is the request package interval, we're gonna be setting to 10 milliseconds. And then our assembly instant or connection point that we did before for our actual inputs, these are the uh, first uh, digital inputs, there's gonna be 101. And that comes directly from our scanner or our adapter that we just did for our click PLC. Then our message size, we're gonna have four bytes like we, we had before on our click. We're gonna call it click input and we're setting up one element, 32 bits. So that's set there. Then if we go to our output, you'll see that we're again, our request package interval is for 10 milliseconds. Our, our connection point is 102 this time for our outputs. Again, it's gonna be four uh, bytes long, 32 bits. And we're gonna say click output and we have one element. Then when we add our message number two, or the last thing on message number one is our configuration data. The configuration data, in our case here, we do not need it, so we ensure that that is unchecked. So message number two, then what we do is we can now say um, on our input, this is now for the analog. Again, our update time is gonna be 10 milliseconds. The connection point is 103 this time. And we're gonna do, we're gonna call this data array, click input float. And we're gonna have four elements for our four inputs, each 32 bit. And that's gonna be 16 bytes total. So which exactly matches what we set up in our click PLC. On our output side, we have again, 10 milliseconds. We have the connection point of 104. And this time here we have click output float. We have two elements. So at 32 bit each, so we have eight bytes of information. On our configuration, we ensure that the is not enabled. So now we're all set here on our scanner. So once we have that all set, we can close that down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, first of all, enable our uh, message, message number one and message number two. And then what we'll do is take um, our first input here of our simulator and turn on the first output click. So that just shows you that physically we can uh, connect to the click PLC and it'll be controlling the inputs and outputs. So that's all set. Then what we can do is transfer that down to our unit. So there we go, let's we'll transfer that down. And once again, we can take a look at our CPU and we can look at our scan time. In this case here, we have a scan time of 1.1 milliseconds, so well below our 10 milliseconds that we have for update time. So everything should work exactly as we planned. Let's close that down. So once again, let's just look at the hardware once more time. And here we go. And one other thing we can do is hit monitor. And we hit monitor, we can actually add this um, ethernet IP scanner to our data view. And we've already done that. So just want to let you know how you can get that onto there. Answer that out. So now we are actually um, connected to our, our units. And what we'll do now is just physically take a look at our hardware that we have here. Here we go. So here's our quick CPU. We have a C0-11DRE-D, and we have our P1-540 um, Productivity Series, um, Productivity 1000 Series. 
and with a simulator here and a notebook card here. So we are now communicating and functioning. So let's take a look. If I were to move my screen a little around a little bit here. There we go. Um, the first thing we'll do is call up our data view. And our data view here will um, show us some of the I.O. points. So there it is for the click. And let's call that up for the productivity. My data view. There we go. And there's the data view for the productivity. You can see everything's here. Um, you'll see that we have the enable and it's currently on because of our programs being scanned and saying turn it on as well as uh, message that's message one enabled and message two enabled as well. So here's our actual analog signals coming in from our click and we can actually go ahead and write an output signal to our click. There you go, go 45, uh, uh, 45.123 in there. And you can see right up here, we we'll put 45.123. So exactly what we expected. Uh, we change that, put 75.12. And what we can do is again, write that over and it puts 75.12 right in here. And this is doing it uh, 100 times a second or 10 every uh, 10 milliseconds, we're, we're updating this information. So next thing what we'll do is take a look at our actual, um, there's our inputs and there's our outputs. And um, what we can do is edit this and let's put in the value of say seven and we'll write that over. And what you'll notice is that it turns on only the first two because my program of my uh, productivity is actually telling me that the first uh, bit here is actually being controlled by the switch. So if I took my switch, turned it on, now it turns on that first output there. So very simple and very easy to uh, create our um, ethernet IP network and using the click as remote IO on this network. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.